Hey everyone, hey, welcome to PDJ, PDJ. I am so glad everyone's able to join us. Um, uh, whatever platform you might be on, thank you for joining us. Uh, I just want to make sure that you always know that you can go right to peakworship.com, go to the live stream, and um, you'll always be able to see us through live stream. And then we save these and we'll download them as well to our um, webpage. So that way you can always catch them. And don't forget to download the um, Peak Worship app because we're going to be um, sending out notifications on um, all the videos that we um, put out so that way no one misses any because I know sometimes there's um, integration problems between um, Facebook and as well as uh, some of the other social media so sometimes we're not always broadcasting live even though we think we are so just make sure that you're you know that you can always come to peakworship.com and go to live stream and you can um, hook up with us each and every Tuesday for PDJ at 12 o'clock and every Thursday morning at 7 30 a.m. for prayer so make sure you submit your prayer request for um, Thursday as well but let's jump into PDJ PDJ what is PDJ? PDJ is, is prayer, devotion, and journaling. I like to come to you each and every Tuesday with PDJ. Just a word, a scripture, uh, kind of a thought, uh, something that we can ponder, something that we can meditate on, and it, 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 to encourage us and to, to help guard ourselves and, and just to think about ourselves and what we could do to um, change and um, be a better Christian, be a better person, a child of God. Um, so this is what we're doing. And we're going to read from Matthew 7 today. And I titled it, You Have to Look at the Fruit. You have to look at the fruit. And that's very important as Christians. We have to look at the fruit. And too many times uh, when we look at the fruit, uh, the world wants to say, even Christians want to say, oh, you're judging me. You're not judging if you're looking at the fruit. That's why we have to look at the fruit. And it goes within Matthew 7, verse 15. We see where it says, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous, ravenous wolves. They, you know, and, and I want us to, before I go a little bit further here, I, I just, you know, many times, you know, we see, well, maybe they're not a prophet, maybe they're not this. We need to, to, identify and look at the fruit of each and every individual because it even goes a little bit further that within a prophet you know a false prophet you know it's those individuals who who know the teaching of Jesus and and, and go the other way and refuse to to follow Jesus refuse to to know and, and speak and say and do anything of Jesus so that that can mean us at times. We gotta make sure we're not a false prophet. That we're we're showing fruit that's not really of God. I, I just want us to understand that because too many times we'll write off scripture. Well, he's not a prophet, so I don't have to listen to him. Or I, he's not a prophet, so that that doesn't count. I can follow him. No, we we need to to align all fruit from every individual. Amen. That's a big amen. It says it continues on. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from the thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. And this was just a teaching um, you know, right after Jesus got done saying, uh, you know, hey, look, you know what, the Pharisees, you know, th th they're, they're speaking, they're, they're speaking, um, um, you know, things out of their mouth, but they're not living it. They're not for me. They're against me. Uh, I am the way. I I'm the only way. That's why the way's narrow, because it has to come through Jesus Christ. And so he he's identifying all these individuals. And, and we see within, you know, the, the Bible, we see others that, that are proclaiming Jesus, but here the, the spirits don't even know their names. And the and they are beat up and cast out. And, and so we need to align everything within our lives. Every individual within our lives, we need to, to check out their fruit. It's not judging if I'm looking at their fruit. If I'm looking at see what the tree's bearing, then I, I, I'm not judging. I'm just seeing if I want to pick off of it, if I want to eat of it, if I want to be a part of it. Because it says, you know what, the bad fruit comes from bad trees. And no one wants to keep a bad tree. How many times we're trying to, to fertilize a bad tree, 
a bad relationship within our lives, uh, uh, something that we know is wrong, um, but we, we refuse to cut it down, but we know it's bearing bad fruit and, and, and it's wrong. That's, that's, that we're in the midst of sin as well. We're, we're, we're in the midst of something that we shouldn't be in that, that could absolutely change us if we're not careful. That could, you know what, come in and, and creep in within our hearts and then we could start manifesting and bearing bad fruit. So we need to really take a look at, at our, our, relationships. We need to take a look at people within our lives. We need to take a look at people that come within our lives. And let's take a look at the fruit. And you might say, well, you know, I don't see no fruit in this individual's life. Well, maybe you don't know them long enough. You know, it's okay. You know, you might not uh, know individuals right away. There's some individuals that it, it, it appears that they have good fruit, but then down the road, we find out that they were all rotten. That fruit was bad, it was terrible, it stank, it made a mess, it tasted bad. And I'm telling you, you know, we should have cut that tree down a long time ago. When that's the case, we need to cut those trees down. You know what, because we might be helping an individual by setting them outside that, you know what, I, I, no thanks, that's not for me. That's not what I do. That's not what I believe that we're called to do. This is, this is who I am. This is, this is the fruit that I bear. This is the fruit that I want. So, you know, I, I choose not to allow that fruit in my life. And that might change an individual's life. But at least we know that our vineyard, our crops, our tree will bear good fruit. So we need to align individuals by the fruit that they bear. Are they bearing good fruit? You know, are they bearing good fruit? And every once in a while, there, there's a spot that's you know within their life that's producing some bad fruit. I mean, you know, only a good tree will produce good fruit but sometimes i understand as christians we don't have it all to, down we don't have it all together amen you know but we can come along and help individuals that's why i believe that we need to to look at others and look at the fruit of others just as jesus was saying about the pharisees we need to take a look and we need to see what fruit individuals are bearing and and do we want to keep that tree within our our inner circle do we want to keep that tree within our life do do we want to just fertilize something that that's already dead and we want to take and, and allow our time to be consumed with that? Or do we want to go ahead and cut that out of our lives and, and move forward? Well, that sounds awful brutal. How, how are lives going to be changed? Well, I'm here to tell you the problem is with, with this day and time is too many Christians are fertilizing and trying to change a dead tree, something that's producing bad fruit that will never produce good fruit until it's cut off, until it's majorly pruned, until Jesus touches their lives. It's not you that can change that tree. It's not you that 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 can can manifest and, and do something with it. You know, it it we we have to focus on the fruit, bearing fruit, and and what we're going to allow in our lives, so our lives do not get tainted. That our lives do not get get um, destroyed by by bad fruit. No one likes bad fruit. It brings flies. It rots. It stinks. And and have you ever had a fruit tree out in your yard and and the fruit falls and you don't pick it up and and man, it, you got nothing but bugs, roaches, flies. It, it's just a mess. It's terrible. That's how you can have relationships. You can have flies in the midst of a relationship. You can have cockroaches in the midst of relationships, and you will. There'll be devastation. There'll be bugs. There'll be trauma. There'll be all kinds of stuff. You know, who, who likes a life of drama? I don't want no drama. I got enough drama in my life. I don't need, need someone bearing bad fruit to have drama in my life. I don't need that. No one else needs that. But we also need to take a look at not only others' fruits and, and who we're, we're getting into relationship with, who we're going to marry, who we're going to do life with, who, who are we going to grow with, who we can share our, our, our goals and our promises and in the future with. But we also need to take a look at our own tree. It, it's a great question to ask ourselves. What fruit are we bearing? Am I always bearing good fruit? Is there areas that, that I, I need to work on? Is there things that, that I need to do? Right? See, it even says in, in the, the word to test all spirits. We need to test those spirits. That that I have, I mean, uh, man, is that really bearing good fruit? Is that individual really bearing good fruit? Is, is that something that, that oh, wow, is that something that's going to edify and encourage myself? Is that something that's going to help grow me and and change me? Or or is that something that that individual, it's going to edify and grow me? Or is it going to bring me down? Am I going to stink uh, as well? And it's a great thing that we need to ask ourselves. What fruit are we bearing? And then what fruit are others bearing that's in our life? 
Maybe you might have some dead trees that you need to remove. That's okay. It's okay. What's wrong is to hang on to, to those trees that are dead in the mindset that we think we can change them. You can't change them. You can replace them, but you can't change them. Only God can do a miracle work in their life. Only God. Yeah, we can be that example. But we also have to be that example through good, tough love, strong love as well. So, what do you have in your life that might not be bearing good fruit? That boyfriend? That girlfriend? If you're married, you, 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 we need to pray for that tree. That tree needs some miracle grow. That needs tree needs Jesus. Jesus can change. Just because that, that tree, if you're in a marriage and, and that tree's not bearing good fruit, doesn't give you the right to, you know, just divorce just because. But if you have relationships, sister so-and-so likes to go party and, you know, do the wrong things afterwards, that, that's bad fruit. Brother so-and-so, you know, he's just a bad influence and, you know, that, that tree needs to go. What fruit are you bearing that others can pick off of, that others can, can receive, that others can get nutrients from? Because that's really what we eat of, right? Whenever we eat of the fruit of the, of the trees, that, that you know, it, it, it's something that, that fills us, but it's something that we enjoy. It tastes good. It, it's going to be healthy for us. It's no different spiritually within friends, within relationships. We need to teach our children to be respectful. We need to teach them that they have to work, uh, that, that there's no entitlement or disrespect. I see children all the time that, hey, bro, that, that's an elder. That is an elder. You don't have no right to say, hey, bro. You have no right to have your hand out completely empty with entitlement that someone owes you something. That is bad fruit. That is not good fruit. And, and the thing is, is here in America, is we, we take those dead trees, that bad fruit, and we accept it, and we encourage it, and, and we condone it. We are okay with it. And, and we're, we're, what we're doing is we're creating generations and, and children and, and families that, that are producing bad fruit, and we're teaching them that. We're enabling them that. We need to teach that, you know, hard work is what we need to do, that we got to get off the couch, that we have to respect others, that we need to watch our mouth, that, that we're able to do the things that's, that God's put in our heart, that, that don't let anybody hold you back, but, but respect has no color, it has no age, and it has no finances. You know what I mean by that? Everyone deserves respect. We should all be bearing fruit of respect of honor. We should be bearing that fruit for others to, to mature others, that, that kids will start opening doors, that kids will start saying, yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. I, I don't know about you, but that's good fruit. I want my son, yes, ma'am, and, 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 and yes, sir, and no, sir, and no, ma'am. And, and there's times that he forgets and we have to remind him, but, but that, hey, that's, that's part of pruning a tree, not cutting it down and destroying it and removing it. That's, that's the part of pruning. See, there's a difference. See, and I believe that deep down we all know the trees that are bad in our lives. And sometimes those are the trees that we can't get out. Those are the trees that are the hardest. And you know, I, I found in my life that, that it, it's, it's easy to throw away the trees that needs to be pruned. And it's very difficult to, to throw away the trees that needs to go away. And we can only do this by God. We need, we need to ask God to bear fruit of patience and long suffering and meekness and mercy. That those trees that we know deep down are good, but we just don't want to take the time to help prune or, or, or be there for, for the hands and feet of God, then, then we need to pray over that, that, that we don't throw those trees away. And we need to surrender those trees in our life that's not producing fruit, that's harmful, harmful to us. It's sending us in depression. It's sending us into anxiety. Things just aren't right. Things aren't good. We know that we need this individual out of our lives. We, we just got, we need this tree, but I can't seem to, to remove this tree. We need just to surrender that. And we need to allow God to take an ax to it. God had no problem cursing that fig tree that wasn't producing. That's exactly what we need to do. We need to surrender those trees and allow God to eliminate those, those things in our lives that we can't seem to shut or destroy, or close, remove, 
Surrender those at the feet of Jesus and Jesus will take care of those. Jesus will move in your behalf. If it's a heart coming after him, Lord, you know what? I do the things I don't want to do and I don't do the things I want to do. And you know, Father God, Lord, that I desire this, but I, I know deep down I don't want it. And, and I just can't seem to close this door. I need you to remove this tree. I need you to close that door. I need you to help I help me because I can't seem to help myself. That's being honest. That's honest. God can hear those prayers. God can do something because that's honesty. That's a relationship with God. He can come in and, and help prune your, your, your tree, your, yourself, and, and, and get you in order. And then he can also go in and, and remove the trees in your life that needs to be removed that's not bearing good fruit. Let's face it, someone that's negative in your life, that, that's, not, that's not good fruit. Someone that constantly, you know what? can't accept what God's given you, your promises, your your dreams, and what you want to become, and what you want to do, and, and that's always negative and telling you you can't. That's a tree that, that is dead, that, that's dead in your life, and you need to remove those trees. No one needs bad fruit in their lives. There's enough coming our way of just of the world. We don't need to add anything else in, in our inner circle, or our families, or our relationships of bad fruit. And you know what? Family's not defined by blood. Let me just tell you, so if you have bad fruit within family, you know what? That, get that tree out of there because no one needs a dead tree. I don't care if it's blood or not. You know what? That, you know, not, you know, it, it, what's, what's the saying? The fruit doesn't fall too far from the tree. Well, you know what? I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. I don't care what fruit my families might be or someone of my family or anything like that. Or it, it, You know what? doesn't mean I have to carry around those strongholds. doesn't mean I have to be like that. I have a choice. I have a choice to produce good fruit. You have a choice to produce good fruit. Everyone does. Just because your blood doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean you have to have them over at your house. You cast that mess out. Till they change, until they start bearing fruit, good fruit, they, they ain't welcome in my house. You understand? There's some brothers and sisters that aren't blood that are closer than family. So let's get this blood thing out of our lives. Let's get this, oh, they're blood. They're, no, 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 no. What fruit is this individual bearing? That's all I want to know. Is it good fruit? Is it fruit of God? Is it the fruit of the Spirit? Is it something that God's pleased with? That's all I need to know. That is a good tree. That creates a good tree, a good fruit that you want your kids around, that you want to be around. You want to be around positive people. You want to be around people that's encouraging you. You want to be around people that will pick you up and dust you off when you fall. No one wants to be stepped on and stomped on. It's kind of like the the parable that Jesus told about the man that was, you know, needed help on the roads and the Pharisee passes by and someone else passes by and here's this Samaritan that passes by and picks him up and takes him and takes care of him and helps him and pays his way. <laughs> Don't we want that in our life? Isn't that what we want in our life? When we come up and we need help, we fall short, we fall down, someone else comes along. That's good fruit. That's the, the, the fruit that we need to bear. Let me just read one scripture, and we're going to leave, leave PDJ with this. Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. So not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of God, you know, kingdom of heaven. I want you to think about that for a minute. Those are the ones that aren't bearing good fruit. I can proclaim them and go out and live a different lifestyle. I'm talking to someone today. I, I, I'm, I'm talking to someone. I'm talking to some Christians today. We can proclaim them and we can play Jesus. We can play church. We're good on Sundays and we're good on Wednesdays. And, and oh, healthy and happy and all Jesus and everything else. But then we don't bear fruit. There's no fruit in our lifestyle. Our lifestyle is not aligned with our confession. We're not doers of the word. We have no work with our faith. It's just a word. And those, I'm telling you, will not enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of the Father in heaven, because those who do the will of the Father in heaven are the ones that are bearing fruit. You can see the fruit on their trees. That's why I'm here to tell you, you can see godly fruit on individuals that don't always go to church. I know that might be tough. You know what? Going to church doesn't give you the automatic entrance into heaven. Mm -mm. Let me just tell you. Doing the will of the Father. And when I do the will of the Father, that means I bear good fruit. I believe we need to assemble ourselves together. I believe that, that we do. But I believe that too many times that, that in, in, in man's 
good doings, that we've got this religious and traditional things, that we've cut down some good trees and, and eliminate them from the church, but they're really bearing good fruit that we need back into the church. See, we need to start taking a look at the fruit, right? Some trees all have moss and some trees are overgrown, but you know what? Whenever they're pruned and cleaned up, we realize, man, they're bearing good fruit. <laughs> There's a message right there. So don't judge me by the outside. Look inside. What fruit am I bearing? I want you to, to, to see Jesus through my lifestyle, not my mouth. Amen? Hey, take a look at ourselves first. We need to take a look at ourselves. What fruit are we bearing? What trees that are not bearing good fruit that are in our lives that we need out? Amen? Father, we come before you, Lord. Lord, we just thank you, Father God, for your word. I thank you, Father God. Lord, I just thank you, Father God, for what you're doing. I thank you, Father God, Lord, that, that you've given us this, this beautiful, beautiful word that, that we can identify, Father God, Lord, others by the fruit that they bear. And that, Father God, Lord, we can see the tree, Father God, Lord, for what the tree is, whether it's good or whether it's bad by the fruit, Father God. And Lord, that, that you have given us the strength and the power. And Lord, whatever we cannot, Father God, Lord, whatever tree we cannot remove in our lives that's bad, Father God, Lord, we just surrender it right now to you that you remove it, Father God. You remove it, Father God. Lord, I only want trees that are producing good fruit within my lives. And I want to be a tree that produces good fruit. So prune it, Father God. Change it, Father God. Lord, remove what needs to be removed. Close the doors that needs to be closed, Father God. Lord, protect us from ourselves, Father God. Lord, that will continue to bear good fruit in the name of Yeshua. We pray this, we ask this in Yeshua's mighty name. Amen. Amen. God is good. God is good. Hey guys, there's no Wednesday night service um, tomorrow night. It's the second Wednesday of the uh, month, so we do not have Wednesday night service, but we will be back here Thursday, 7.30 a.m. Uh, for prayer. So make sure you join us for prayer. Also, there's no Bible basics the next two Sundays. The next two Sundays, we have Mother's Day, um, which come out and join us for Mother's Day uh, for um, uh, this Sunday, 10 a.m. Invite, bring your mom, bring some other family. And then the next Sunday, we're celebrating our 10-year uh, birthday uh, You know uh, that we're having... 10 years, peak worship 10 years, and we're going to be having uh, like donuts and, and coffee and orange juice, things like that on um, that Sunday, not Mother's Day, but the next Sunday celebrating our birthday at 9 a.m. before service. So come out and join us. Come out and join us. We'd love to see you. Love to meet you. Love to celebrate together. We want to see your moms. We want to see all the moms out there. We have a guest speaker that's going to be um, preaching uh, this uh, uh, Sunday. So make sure you join us. You do not want to miss miss the speaker incredible it's going to be awesome so that's it love you guys you guys have a great day uh we have several people that we need to keep lifted up in prayer that's had surgery that's going to be going to surgery uh just all kinds of things so keep our our family prayer our our peak family lifted up in prayer amen love you guys you guys have a great day bye bye